Hi, Jim. Good morning. Good morning, everybody else. <laughs> How are you this morning? I'm good, yeah. I'm gonna make you the host. Okay. All right. Okay, we have about a minute to go. I see we have a couple of participants here. Yeah. <laughs> good morning, everybody. Morning. Does somebody have a bird? Yes, I do. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Making some adjustments. You're a little blurry, Jim. A little blurry? Yeah. I was late last night. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe my screen, my lens needs to be cleaned. If I put the light on, is it better? Not yeah, really. it's a little bit better. <laughs> okay, I'll leave it up. <laughs> All right, shall we begin? Everybody yeah. said, let's begin. Okay. All right. If we would all come to the Wu Chi posture, let's take a moment to relax, find that posture which is anatomically neutral, your feet flat on the floor, toes point forward, let, unlock your knees, your legs want to be kind of springy, uh, but make sure your tailbone tucks down a bit, relax your shoulders down. Loosen your hands, loosen your arms, tuck the chin in and lift your head a bit as if there's a string on top pulling it up. Once you find that place where you can feel your body weight on the soles of your feet, not, not just on the balls of your feet or on the heels, but the entire surface of your feet should feel your body weight pushing into the ground, right? So you want your body weight to drop down but we also lift our head up and we let the shoulders pull down. One analogy I heard is pretend that you have a cape on and the cape is made of lead and it's pushing your shoulders down. So you kind of, not quite forcefully, but with intention, pull your shoulders down, lift your head up. Get your head centered on the atlas vertebrae. Then take a moment just to breathe. Remember, we breathe in through the nose, we breathe out through the mouth, between the inhalation and exhalation. Have a small pause, and in that pause moment, you wanna feel your torso relax, and you will get a sense of sinking, all right? A feeling as if the whole body is relaxing and sinking down. This feeling is called sinking chi, and, and we wanna to try to get that feeling in that little pause between the inhalation and exhalation. We breathe diaphragmatically. Remember, the belly goes out when we breathe in. We pause, relax the rib cage, feel the breath sink down, and then exhale through the mouth. And continue exhaling until you feel a slight pulling in or tightening of your stomach muscles. So your feelings are the belly swelling when you breathe in, the torso filling, and you want to feel the torso fill right up to the clavicle. You want to feel the back fill with air. 
And then you pause and let all of that settle down. And then exhale and tighten the belly slightly. So let's take a few gentle breaths in. Pause. Exhale out. You want to get used to feeling these sensations in your body. These are your tools for learning. Your feedback mechanisms. As you breathe in, make sure the sternum doesn't lift up, but feel the torso getting wider. Okay, if we're nice and relaxed now, Let's just do a couple of little warm-up movements. We're going to start with this movement called Grand Circulation of Chi. Bring your hands up like you're hugging the tree. Take a breath in. Exhale, let your hands slide down. As they pass your lower belly, bend your knees. Let the hands move in the inside of the legs. And then come around to the back of the legs. Inhale as you stand up. Bring your hands to the kidneys, then open them. Exhale and give yourself a nice big hug. Feel your back really stretch. Then open the arms, bring them over the top of your head, and then arch your back as you breathe in. Exhale, come back down the center. Around the back of the legs, inhale up. Exhale, stretch. Inhale, arch your back. Exhale, come down. Inhale, back up. Exhale, hug. Inhale, stretch back. One more time through the cycle. up, exhale, hug, inhale, exhale, coming back to Wu Chi, and relax. Let's do some Zwei Shou, drumming Chi, shifting left and right. As you shift your weight onto one leg, sink into it deepening that crease between the leg and the torso, the quad. You want to squeeze that quad shut and then open it. If you can, when you shift your weight to one foot, pick the heel up of the opposite foot so that you transfer most of your weight to the supporting leg. and then come back to stillness. Make sure everything is loose. Viewing the heels, shift your weight, turn the opposite direction, look down at the heel of the empty foot. Up, sit down, make sure you sit down on this leg and turn. Try to see the heel of your foot. And if your back is very flexible and loose, you'll see the heel of both feet. And come back to neutral. Shanghai arm swing. Bend your knees, hands back. Spring up, breathe in. Come up on your toes if you can. And then drop into the squat. <sighs> 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 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Drumming the chi, cat foot stance. Shift your weight to one leg, pick up the heel of the opposite foot and turn towards the corner. As you do, pull the heel in. So you're pivoting on the ball of your foot and your hands do drumming chi. So make sure you pull the heel in and turn towards the direction that your knee and toes are pointing. So if your knee and toe are pointing that way, you're turning that way. Ten more. That's five on each side. Okay. The next swing has the same footwork, except we have this very complex hand movement. You pivot. If your weight's on the right foot, the right hand goes up towards the ceiling. The left hand goes to the side. So you're making a big U with your hands, a letter U. Then you shift your weight to a center, your hands drop and you spring up like Shanghai arm swing. Then you drop, then you pivot the other way. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Try to find the rhythm in this. Be very light on your feet. Only when you are lifting your hand in one direction are you rooted on your supporting leg. The rest of the movement, you're almost hopping through space. Very light, and then root. Light, root. Good, and come back to stillness. Let's try one or two more as why show movements, just because I feel like doing them today. All right? The next movement, we widen our stance a bit. Both feet are gonna to turn to the left. We pivot on your heels, and you bring your toes around to the left, and as you do that, the hand that corresponds with the back leg comes across your forehead. Make a fist, thumb side down in front of your forehead. The other hand, make a fist, thumb side up, is by your kidneys. So this is the final posture. Then drop your hands, Shift your weight, pivot the empty foot, pull it around, shift your weight, pivot the front foot, and move into posture. So we begin to turn, the back foot is pivoting, we're shifting the weight, the front foot is pivoting, and then we land on that front foot to finish the movement. Shift your weight, pivot the Back foot, shift your weight, pivot the front foot, lean. And as you enter the posture, turn as far as you can to look behind yourself. So it's one foot pivot, the other foot pivot. Take your time with it at first until you feel that rhythm. How are we doing with this? I don't know if you can't, you can see my feet or not. It's kind of tough. 
Let me just pull this down. So maybe you can just get a glimpse of how the feet are pivoting. There's one, two, lean. Back, pivot, back, pivot. Okay, we'll stop there. It's always good to try to make some complex movements, shifting your weight, repositioning your feet. Always remember in Tai Chi, the foundation is critical. We have to have a solid foundation. And the way we build the foundation is to first plant our feet where they need to be to achieve the posture we're moving into. All right, let's do a little bit of warm up and stretching. Uh, we'll take some movements out of the uh, Shibashi uh, routine. So let's start with parting the clouds. Sink down. And this is a nice, slow, gentle stretch up. Palms turn to the ceiling, come up on your toes. Sink back down, bend your knees. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. As you come up on your toes, your calf muscles will tighten, your thighs tighten, your ankles strengthen. As we reach up, the shoulders are activated, the deltoid muscles, the trapezius muscle, the pectoral, and come back down. Relax. Let's do opening the arms. Again, we sink down, we stand up, we arch the back, let the arms fall back, let gravity pull them. Feel the stretch across the pectoral muscles. Feel the shoulder blades come together. Then you come back down. Inhale up, exhale down. Slight pause after you finish inhaling. Just allow the muscles to find where they can stretch to comfortably. We're not looking to force the stretch. And come back down. Now let's work the lower back. Okay? We're going to bring our hands up. We're going to bend at the waist. Don't lock your knees. But don't bend them either. Just keep them unlocked. Get your torso parallel to the ground. Push your backside back a bit. Let your arms hang. Then bring the palms out to the side, standing up. Imagine you're lifting two balls in your hand. And then you're pressing down. Lift those balls up. Breathe in. Bend over, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. One more time, inhale up, exhale down, and come back up to Wu Chi. Let's try uh, tossing the ball. And when we work the waist, we're going to isolate the hips and the legs. We're going to be turning and shifting our weight. You can pick up the back heel of the empty foot as we toss the ball behind us. Then sit down. Then stand up. Lift the heel of the back foot. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, in,
One more on each side. And then come back. Good. Let's do a little leg stretching. Okay, so we're going to widen our stance. This is called dragon stretches its tail. We're going to move our weight to one leg. And when you do that, push your tailbone backwards. And sit down on your leg. Try to keep the knee over the ankle. It'll go forward a little bit, but if you look down, you should be able to see your toes. If your knee is covering your toes, pull it back. And come up, shift your weight, sit backwards a bit. You're going to feel a stretch in the inside of the leg and the back of the leg. Keep your foot flat on the floor. Exhale as you sink, inhale as you rise up. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. Do one more on each side. When you come back, gently walk yourself in. This way we don't uh, take those stretched groin muscles and just close them up real quick. We kind of ease back into our stance. All right, let's go through the form. I'm going to walk to the front. Again, I'm going to have my back to you. We're going to step through the form. Then we'll break out some movements and then do the form again. So let's let me adjust this a bit. Can you all see me? All right. Let's take a breath in. Exhale and sink. Small circulation of chi. Rising up, breathe in. Breathe out. Parting the wild horse's mane. Make sure we're turning at the waist. Bring the left foot in. Step out. Brush the hand coming up by the hand going down. Turn into posture. Pick up your back heel and begin to turn in the opposite direction. The back foot comes in, goes out, repeat the movement. Pointing the wild horse's mane, right side. Turn, step in, step out, pointing the wild horse's mane, left side. White crane spreads its wings, turn in to the left. Pick up your right foot, aim the toe to the corner. Shift your weight, turning in the direction of your toes. Begin opening the arms, pick up your back heel. Pick up your left foot, put it in front in the cat foot stance, and turn at the waist to the left. Bring the left hand up, drop the right, turn to the right. Bring the right hand up, drop the left. Rush knee and push. Step wide, shift your weight, and push the right hand forward. Pick up your back heel, turn to the left, bring your left hand up, drop the right. Step through. Rush knee and push. Back heel up, turning. Position the hands. Step through. Rush knee and push. Play the peepaw. Bring your right foot step to the corner. Shift your weight, turning to the corner. Bring your left foot in front, touch with the heel, turning back. Drop the right hand, lift the left to play the peepaw. Drop the right hand, turn to the right, hold the ball. Step back with your left foot. Shift your weight back, pick up your right toes, turn your waist and push the right hand forward, pull the left hand back, repulse the monkey. Drop the right hand, left hand comes up, 
Stepping back, repulse the monkey left side. Circle your hands, step back, repulse the monkey right side. Circle the hands, step back, repulse the monkey left side. Grasping the bird's tail, circle the hands, bring your left foot back. Step forward, wide. Ward off with your left. Turn left, hold the baby. Sit back, sink down on your right leg. Roll back. Right hand to the left wrist. Turn, press forward. Separate the hands, withdraw. Go forward, push out and up. Turning 90 degrees to the right. Sit back, open your arms as you pivot on the left heel. Drop the hands in a big circle, hold the ball left over right. The right foot, the heel lifts. We step wide and ward off with the right. Turn, hold the baby, roll back left. Turn, press, separate the hands, withdraw, push, pivot. Casting the net, reposition your right foot, drop the hands, bring them up on your right side, touch the thumb, Shift your weight onto the right foot. The right hand comes in and starts down. The left hand comes up and we step into single lift. Stretch your arms out. Pull back. Open your right hand, pivot. The hands come together. Shift to the left leg. Bring your right foot back parallel and start your sequence of cloud hands. Step to the left. Right foot in. Turn right. Step left. Right foot in. Turn right. Step left. Third step. Bring your right foot in, but pigeon toe in. Finish your cloud hands. Touch your thumb. Bring the right hand in, begin dropping it. The left hand starts to come up. We step out into single whip. Palms open. Step forward with your right foot. This is lifting heaven. Shift your weight right, turn right. Pick up your left heel. Pick up your left foot. Turn, drop the foot and reach out with the hand to pat the horse. Open the arms. Step towards the corner with your left foot, toes peeking, pointing to the corner. Cross your hands as you bring your right foot in. Palms face you. Roll the wrists around, palms away from you. Lift your foot. Open as you extend your foot. Close as you bring the foot in, cross your hands. You can put your foot down if you need to, or you can hold it up. Drop your hands. Two fists, step to the corner. Strike the opponent's ears with fist. Begin to pivot around. Cross your hands. Roll your hands, palms out. Lift, open, close, bring your right hand up, touch the thumb, step out to single whip. Snake creeps down, bring this hand in, shift your weight back, turn, lower the hands, bend your knee. 
return to single whip, but now your right hand is behind you, fingers touching the thigh. Golden rooster stands on the right leg. Shift your weight to the left leg. I'm sorry, golden rooster stands on the left leg. The right leg is moving in and up. And then we step back, changing the hands, changing the feet. Stepping your left foot forward, aim to the corner. Hold the ball. Right hand and right foot raise up. Shift your weight, turn your waist to push with the left hand. Bare lady works at shuttles, right corner. Open the arms, circle them down, pivot to the other corner. Left foot, left hand go out and up, push. Bare lady works at shuttles, left corner. Shift your weight to the left leg. Step to the right. Bring your left foot in front. Touch with the ball of the foot. Reach up. Turn. Bending at the waist. Push your tailbone back. Sink down on your right leg. Pick up needle from C bottom. Stand up. Roll the hands. Step wide. Turn your Torso to the right, opening the arms. Pull back. Now I'm going to turn this direction. Pivot on your left heel. Lower the hands. Bring the right hand to the forehead, the left hand down. Step forward with your right foot. Drop the left hand. The right hand goes out. We shift the weight forward and push. Let's turn around to chop. Roll back. Bring your hands up. Step to the corner. Now the hands start to separate. The right hand is dropping. The left hand is reaching. And you step under the left hand. This is deflecting downward. This is intercepting. This is the punch. Then bring the hand under the forearm, palms up, close to the back towards you, but now circle. In other words, turn. Open the arms as you do that. Okay. So instead of just this to push, we're going to go wide and then turn and push. Then we step back, parallel your feet, reach up, embrace the tiger. Return to the mountain. How do we do with that? Take a moment. Are there any questions? If you have a question at this point, please ask it. Uh, I'll try to answer it. Is there any place where you feel you need a little more instruction? Uh, otherwise, we'll just try the form again. So, I, Jim, I just moment. wonder. Um, I find it difficult, like when we turn around and my back's to you, I have to learn the moves, the new moves. Mm -hmm. Is there any way to do it in reverse so that we're always facing you until... So you, you want me to do it mirror image? Yeah. I think uh, that can be confusing too. What I'd like to do is break down those movements. So if each of you have a movement you want to work on, let's take a moment to look at those. So okay. Deborah, where are you getting stuck from? From the movement, uh, opening the fan? Um, well, before that, the snake creeps down. Okay. Snake creep after we do the left kick, right? Yeah. So let's look at that from the front view. All right. We've made the turnaround. So we've pivoted around, we've crossed the hands, and then we're going to do the left kick. All right. Then the hands come down. But as they come down, we're going to set up single whip. So one hand starts to come up, the other hand is down. Then we touch the thumb. Then this hand starts down, this hand starts up. So they're crossing each other. Then 
then step out and the arms start to separate in final posture. So from the side, Right, so let me try to get the body feeling. We've done the kick. The hands are closing. They're repositioning. And now they're ready to open. And then they both stretch out and the chest hollows. Okay. So let's do it again. From the kick. Okay. Does that make sense? Can you all follow it? If you can't, if you're having trouble with it, it's okay. You can still do the kick and put your hand out and do single it. All we're doing is just adding a little bit more dynamism into the movement. But you can still do it the, the old, the traditional way that we first learned it. Kick. Place your hand and move the other hand. The only thing that's happening if we do it the beginner way is that one part of our body is not moving anymore. This has stopped moving. Okay. And it's somewhat of a violation of the rules of Tai Chi. So, but for beginners, for intermediate players, it's perfectly fine to just do your kick, hold the ball, touch the thumb, and move out. Okay. So leave it up to you if you want to do the advanced version, uh, modified advanced version, okay? There's really an intermediate version where we finish the kick, and then both hands start to roll. And then snake creeps down. The hand, you're moving back, but you're turning. And then we're sinking down. And then the hands are opening again, but the right hand is going backwards. The left hand is coming up forward. Can you see what we'll see that? So if I put the whole sequence together, Anywhere else? Did that, that make sense to you? Yeah, it made sense. Not, it makes sense, but it's not easy. <laughs> no. <laughs> not what How about it is. anyone else? Anyone else have a particular area they want to talk about? No? It's okay. Normally go, you jump from one end of the room to the other so that we always have a view in sight. Here, when we turn our back, we don't have you anymore. Yeah, yeah. That's why sometimes it's better just to take the sections and do them as, as separate sections and then turn around and do the next section, turn around and do the next section, each you know, going forward. So uh, what I wanted to look at is I want to look at Fair Lady Works and Shuttles, which is a beautiful movement. Uh, and as beginners, we do Fair Lady Works at Shuttles, you know, coming from Golden Rooster Stands on the right leg, then we hold the ball and then the right hand, right foot go out, then the weight shifts, then we turn and push, okay? So again, we've got this 
kind of a beat to it, right, which is pieces. So we're breaking it into pieces again, which is a beginner book. Look at it. It was step part one, part two. Well, how do I put that into in, make it one part? And it, again, it's a little bit more dynamic. So let me just show you a little more advanced version of that. So as opposed to one, two, both hands and arms are doing something at the same time. All right, so you, you see the difference. In the beginner version, this hand is not moving. And then it moves to the push. And a little more advanced, this hand is coming around, this hand is going under the elbow, and they start to separate. And the movement flows as one. And when you pivot, the arms are opening, So if you can do that, if you can find that rhythm from this movement, instead of holding the ball, this hand is pulling in and this hand is going to the elbow. The back foot's lifting, the hands start to separate and it all flows together. So let's try that just a couple more times. We come up, returning to the corner, left hand, left, right hand goes to, towards the elbow of the left hand, the left hand has the palm facing you. They begin to open, as they open, we're stepping. And then this hand turns, this hand turns, we grab hold of something, and we pull it. Then we pivot. Under the elbow. Palm towards you. Palm towards you. Palms turn. Grab hold of something. Just like you're grabbing an arm. And pull it. Okay, so what we're trying to do is get more of the body moving at the same time, as opposed to having one part stand still. Now, I don't want one part to stand still here while this part is moving. I don't want this part to stand still while this part is moving. So we have to get both parts of the body moving at the same time, and that's what brings us from the square form to the more round form. Everything is rolling together. So the whole body is moving like a sphere. So let's look at that sequence uh, from turn around to kick, uh, single whip, snake creeps, creeps down, returning to single whip, and uh, fair lady works at Chubbs after, after Golden Rooster. So let's do the turn around. Single whip. Snake creeps down. Golden rooster. Fair lady works at shuttles.
and then picking up needle C bottom, driving in to the right. Think of the right shoulder. Remember we have a, what's called a shoulder stroke. And so think of this as pushing something with your shoulder, and then lifting. And at the same time that you lift, the other foot comes in. And then when you sink, you're gonna sit down deeply. Come up, and then open the fan. Okay, so that's a little closer look at section four. Let's do it one more time together. Just change the angle. I think I need a bigger screen. I don't know what you see, but I'm looking at myself and I'm saying, all right, now I can't see my head, but that's okay, my head's not important. So we've turned. Single whip, snake creeps down. Golden rooster, step backwards. Fair lady works at shuttles. Do the turn. Okay. All right. So let's look then at the last section after we do open the fan, you're going to pivot, reposition your left foot, drop the hands, the left hand comes to the forehead, the right hand stays down by the waist. As you step forward with no weight shift, the hand goes out and the other hand drops. The hand dropping comes in front of the hand going out. Okay, so the sequence, as it rolls, no pause between them. Then there's the rollback. Then we step to the corner and both hands are moving. Right hand is slicing down, the left hand is reaching out. We step under it, then we punch. Then we drop the hand, both palms come up, turn the waist. Turn the waist. Push. Step back. Embrace the tiger. Return to the mountain. So if I look at that uh, last section, section five, everything is going again at one time. So we are going to pivot. See if you can follow with me. How'd you do? Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the, the five sections, but we're going to do each section independently. So let's go to section one. Take a breath in, exhale and sink. 
small circulation of chi. Turn, parting the wild horse's mane. White crane spreads its wings. Brush knee and push. Play the peacock. Section two, repulse the monkey. Tight. <laughs> More to off. Roll back. Press. Push. Pivot. Roll off. Roll back. Press. Push. Casting the net. Now we're moving into section three. Single whip, cloud hands, third step, finish your cloud hands, stop the right hand in, down, the left hand out and up, stretch. High pat the horse. Boom. Separate the right foot. Strike the opponent's ears with fist. Now we do the turnaround. Separate the left foot. Begin your hand movement, the single whip. Weight back, center yourself, come down. Returning to single whip, but with the right hand behind you, fingers touching the thumb, then all in one movement. Lift. Press down, lift up. Step forward. Circle the hands, come under the elbow. Both hands are opening. Then pick up needle from C bottom. Remember you're driving in. Lift up. Squat down. Stand up. Open the fan. Uh, open the fan and then pivot. We doing that. When we get back into class, hopefully someday soon, uh, we all have more time to go over it, it, that individually with each of you. Uh, once you get that sense of everything moving together, that's when you really start to, to get that flow. Always remember that we start Tai Chi in what's called the square form. All right, that means there's going to be a lot of edges to it, a lot of places where one part's moving, the other part's not moving. Uh, and that's just the learning process. Then we start to shave off the edges. In other words, we start to eliminate those uh, separate pieces and they blend all together in one continuous movement. So everything is going at one time. And as we get better and better, the timing of all of those pieces starts to get more uh, correct, if I can use that term. They just get better and better timing. The beauty of that is you probably never reach perfection, and that's why Tai Chi is just a lifelong learning process. Uh, but as I've learned from some of my teachers, the longer you practice, the better you get, the 
longer you practice, the older you get. And therefore, as we get older, we're getting better with our, with our practice. And that's the good news, because it's a system in which we actually get better as we get older. If you look at some of the senior Tai Chi players in their 90s, in their 100s, and, and you would never believe their age and with, when you look at how flexible and how fluid they are in their movements and how strong they are. So let's just quickly come into uh, hugging the tree posture. And by the way, as we're hugging the tree, by the way, uh, if you find that a movement for you works better by uh, having the movement slightly different, but you feel it coordinated better, use it, all right? There's no hard and fast rules as to the external postures. That's why if you look at the different uh, systems of Tai Chi, their external postures are similar, but not always the same. So that means you have some flexibility in the external posture where we don't have flexibility is in the fluidity of the movements and the timing of the movements so that the body's flow and the energy flow is unobstructed. Well, let's just sit here for a moment. Practice this stance by itself or you can practice the entire uh, basic form of Jan Jung, which are the six movements, the six postures rather. Wu Chi, hugging the belly, hugging the heart, viewing the sky, standing in the stream, returning to Wu Chi, or if you want, just stand in hugging the tree posture. All right? Uh, in some uh, texts, they call this standing post. And we just stand still and hold the posture. You can use a clock, you can use an internal count, however you want to do it, but you want to increase the amount of time that you can remain in the posture without moving. Ideally, you want to hold a posture for about five minutes. It takes a long time for you to reach that plateau. So start with 20 seconds or 30 seconds, move to 40 seconds, gradually add. Stand in a posture for half a minute, do that for a week or so, then add five or 10 seconds. Do that for a week or so, and add five or 10 seconds, and gradually build up over time where you're standing for two or three or four minutes, and maybe even five minutes in a posture. Take a deep breath in, relax, loosen up for some zwa show. Doing the heels. Arm swing. When we started, I did a 20 count. Now I'm doing a five count, so five on each side. And let's end with just that grand circulation of chi again. Hands here, take a breath in, exhale, inhale up, exhale, inhale, stretch, exhale down, inhale up. Exhale, hug. Inhale, arch your back. Last one, down, up, around, over. And come back to Wu Chi and just shake it out. And I hope to see you all next week. If you have any questions, please take a moment to ask if you want to. I'm not sure what time we're at. But Any questions? If not, thank you for being here. I hope to see you all next week. Take care, everyone. Bye.